Good morning, everyone. Today we're coming at you from Myrtle Beach here in South Carolina, the Grand Strand. And in this video, we're going to show you off everything there is to do here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And there is a whole bunch from the tourist attractions to the beach to food, the occasional adult beverage, amusement parks, water parks, nighttime entertainment, and more. Mini golf. Lots of mini golf. There's no shortage of that. All right, I go by the legend. This is my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. We're going to show you around all the things there is to do here in Myrtle Beach. One of the places to get the best view in Myrtle Beach is to go on the Sky Wheel, which is the big Ferris wheel located right here on the beach. So we're now on board the Myrtle Beach Sky Wheel. Going to show you some of the views you get as we're right here on Ocean Boulevard. Now the Sky Wheel itself, it costs $16 to ride. Uh, we did find a coupon to get $2 off in one of the coupon books you can pick up around town. And I love the placement on this observation wheel. <laughs> You can see um, you know, all the cheesy tourism attractions and turn around this way, you can see a whole bunch of wild looking thrill rides. And then you get some of the big giant hotels. And just a really great view of the beach, which is uh, definitely the, the best part of it. Other bonuses, the cabins are fully air conditioned, which is nice because it is a pretty warm day here in the Grand Strand. This way because the beach sort of curves to the right so you can just see the beach for just miles and miles and miles while on board the ferris wheel here oh and the slingshot's going the slingshot goes higher than the ferris wheel and there we go that's the sky wheel if you're looking to get a view of the beach pretty good place to do it Right next to the sky wheel, they got a live band playing. Well, I probably wouldn't recommend riding the sky wheel at night, as well, you can't really see it too much on oh, the beach and that kind of thing. But the lighting package on this Ferris wheel that's really cool. Now, I'm currently at a Myrtle Beach institution. This is the Family Kingdom Amusement Park, the biggest amusement park in the Grand Strand, and an institution. It's been here since 1966. It is free to come on in. You do have to pay per ride, or you can get a wristband to go on all the rides as much as you want. The wristband is about $32. Right now, the park is only operating in the evenings, but let's go check out some of the rides. So the star attraction here at Family Kingdom is the Swamp Fox roller coaster. This big old wooden roller coaster opened with the park back in 1966. And there, people go down the first drop. Now, I just got off the Swamp Fox, and um, it's a roller coaster from 1966 that feels like it's a roller coaster from 1966. It's really, really rough. Yes, uh, I kind of equate it to what being in a car crash would feel like. But on the good side, it is a, a very cheap roller coaster. It only costs about six bucks to ride. And um, it's, it's not common that you get a roller coaster of this size and scale for $6. But they could definitely use some track work. Here you can see the Twist and Shout, which is the park's wild mouse roller coaster. Now these, you're riding a little cool hot rod car. And these roller coasters are famous for their tight turns, like that one there. Well, one of my favorite attractions here at Family Kingdom is the Great Pistolero Roundup, which is a shooting dark ride made by the Sally Corporation. So you have a gun and you get to shoot some targets and get points. One of the best rides in the park is the Log Flume. A nice big Log Flume. But it's got a cool part. And that is this. The Log Flume has a roller coaster type drop where you go down, up, and then splash down. And then takes you on a scenic tour past the friendlies. Now right across the street from Family Kingdom is the Splashes Water Park. Uh, owned by the same company, but Splashes Water Park has not operated last year and is not operating this year. So I have no idea if it's like a staffing thing or what or if Splashes will ever return. But it's still here. It seems like it's in pretty good shape. So hopefully come 2022, we'll see the return of Splashes Water Park. The cool thing about Splashes is it's right on the beach. So when you're standing there getting ready to go on down their slide, right on the other side is, of this road is the beach itself. So it's in a really neat location. So something we just got done doing here in Myrtle Beach is the Sea Thunder boat ride. Um, kind of you're in this giant speedboat and it's about a two hour ride. You go out, you go through the intercoastal waterway, you go out into the Atlantic Ocean, uh, you go fast. 
Uh, the idea is that you're going to go try and see dolphins. Unfortunately, we did not see any dolphins on our adventure. But what's cool guest service is if you don't see any dolphins, you get a free ticket to come back. Yeah, so, it doesn't expire. Yeah, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I really like the going, I've never been on a giant speedboat like this, so going fast and riding the waves on the ocean was a lot of fun. Uh, I do recommend wearing swim trunks. Uh, it is a wet ride, and we got pretty calm water when we still had a wave that got us really, really good. But uh, it was about $25 a person this is, but fun times. This wild looking building here is the Hollywood Wax Museum Complex, which is home to three different attractions. You've got a Hollywood Wax Museum, which is a really well done wax museum filled with all sorts of figures from movies and TV, pop culture. They give you props. Uh, that you can use to take pictures as well. Yeah, there, it's actually it's really, really well done. It's really fun, um, bigger than I thought it would be. Um, Molly, your favorite scene? Oh, Martha Stewart right next to Snoop Dogg in the kitchen. Yes, so it was, it was really nice. They also have two more attractions there. They have Hannah's Maze of Mirrors, which is a mirror maze with some special effects and added elements to it. And then there's Outbreak, which is their haunted house. The haunted house is kind of mostly special effects and animatronics driven, and it, that's also really well done. Lots of cool animatronics. It is frightening and gory. Yeah, not recommended for children. You no. Know, I mean, I was scared. There are parts of it gets very dark and things startle you. Um, not the cheapest attraction either. To do the Wax Museum, it's $30, and then it's about $15 or $16 to do the Maze of Mirrors or the Haunted House. You can get a combo ticket that includes all the attractions for $40. I enjoyed it. I would probably recommend it, but it is not cheap. And to see all three, it probably takes you around an hour to an hour and a half. Of course, we can't talk about Myrtle Beach without mentioning the beach itself. Uh, big, long beach. Tons of parking as well. There's lots of meter parking or public parking lots. So I don't think you'll have too much of a trouble finding a spot to park. I believe it's a, like a no alcohol beach. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. And uh, I believe there's like no shade structures besides umbrellas permitted. I saw that on a sign. I mean, you do have a couple of piers like that over there, which for a couple bucks you can walk out on. Uh, some of the longer ones have fishing on it as well. And then one thing I love about Myrtle Beach, well, if you come to the middle of town, there is a boardwalk. So you'll have the beach and then a boardwalk, and the boardwalk will have all sorts of stuff on it. Restaurants, bars, stores, arcades. It's always like a, it's, it's a great summertime thing to do. Walk along the beach boardwalk. Yes. Sunday's gonna run you about nine bucks. Skyfall 750, Airstrike, that big spinning arm ride, 13. If you wanna go in the slingshot, that's gonna be 28. So one really fun thing you do if you're a sports fan here in Myrtle Beach, come see some minor league baseball. The Myrtle Beach Pelicans are a single A affiliate of the Chicago Cubs. And each day of the week, they do some sort of wild promotion. We're here on Tuesdays, so there's uh, $2 beers and $2 tacos. And uh, minor league baseball is really fun. The stadium is, is really nice. And also, like, in this inning, if you look over there in the dugout, that dog, is he's the bat boy. So he's going to come and retrieve the bat. Let's see. Let's get ready for it. And there he goes. There he goes. He got the biggest pop of the night so far. He's a good boy. Pretty, uh... Uh, but it's definitely a nice place to watch a ball game. Also right near uh, Broadway at the beach. The main water park here in town is Myrtle Waves, which is a pretty uh, pretty decent sized water park. They've got a bunch of slides and lazy rivers, wave pools, that kind of thing. Not something we're gonna visit. We're not the biggest water park people, but it is about $31 to get in. Um, I will say if you are coming on a Friday to Myrtle Beach, they do a really good deal on Fridays. I think it's like three to eight. They come to the water park for like $13 and they do drink specials and food specials. Now it'll probably be more crowded, but that's, you know, go to a water park for 13 bucks, especially one decent size. That's a really good deal. 
Also, it gets very hot here in the summer, so I could see why this gets popular. I'd also recommend coming in the morning. Today, uh, we're filming this about 11.30. We drove by yesterday in the afternoon and it was slammed. Today does not look too bad. Right in the middle of the town, actually on the location, uh, the former location of the old Pavilion Amusement Park is the Myrtle Beach Zip Lines, a series of a couple different zip lines, and also this big, big ropes course. Now pricing on this, I believe their website's a little confusing. If you want to go zip lining, it is $40. If you want to go on that giant rope adventure course, that would be $70. And you got to book tours to do this kind of stuff. But uh, you probably get some awesome views because you're so close to the beach. We are now at Broadway at the Beach, which is Myrtle Beach's huge, massive entertainment, shopping, and dining area, home to tons and tons of restaurants, shops, and attractions. In this section here, well, we're gonna show you some of the best stuff to do at Broadway at the Beach. That is a uh, pretty wild looking. That is the Beach Rider Jet Boat, which you could go on here at Broadway at the Beach. Uh, that's a wild looking ride. Now, if you wanna go on the Jet Boat ride, it's gonna run you about $20 per adult. Does some pretty cool moves. Look at that. Pretty neat. There are a ton of fun shops here at Broadway at the Beach. One of our favorites is Bird's Famous Cookies. It does free samples of these tiny, wonderful little cookies. Homer Simpson has here at the Aztec Theater. They've got the Simpsons 4D movie you can go and see. I like how you've got a Bart over there taking tickets. Let's go check this out. And we're now in the lobby of the Aztec Theater. A really cool photo up there. <laughs> Playing the Planet of the Apes musical. I like some of the details here at the Simpsons attraction. Like the nervous teen is locked out of the ticket booth. Sideshow Bob is hiding behind a plant. Ah, uh, that was really fun. Um, a lot of the 4D effects work really well. Uh, the footage was really fun. Uh, they made fun of kind of 3D and 4D films. And then you exit through the Quickie Mart, where you get the whole Prostilicus. And then you could get like uh, all sorts of fun Simpsons stuff, like Buzz Cola. Get all the flavors of Buzz Cola. And then of course, with it being the Quickie Mart, you could buy a Squishy. There is the Quickie Mart. Now to go to see the Simpsons 4D film, it is $17, but uh, I enjoyed it. If you're a big Simpsons fan, I do recommend it. It's free if you want to just go to the cookie market. If you have a sweet tooth, you'll probably want to step into It's Sugar, which is this kind of like a larger than life candy store, which is, oh my gosh, there is so many sweets in here and like giant boxes of stuff. Like look at the size of that Kit Kat box. It is uh, quite the place. And I gotta show off this. There is a bench where you can take your picture taken with a jelly belly. One of the main attractions at Broadway at the Beach is Wonderworks, which is kind of like the combination of an indoor amusement park slash science museum. Um, they do have a lot of fun stuff in there. Very popular though. Look at that line to get into the upside down White House. Now for Wonderworks, it does cost about $30 for adults to go in. It'll be a little bit cheaper for kids. And Wonderworks does do some combo tickets with Soar and Explore, which is going to be this complex here on the left, which is a ropes course, and then a big zip line that goes across the lake. So if you want to do Wonderworks, and then the zip line and the ropes course, the tickets would be about $42. Now you can do everything on its own. Uh, the zip line's pretty neat how it goes across the lake there. Yeah. Really, really great use of space. And then the, the ropes courses, those are always fun as well. Pop on into Retroactive, the 70s, 80s, and 90s store. So I think my favorite part of this store is the t-shirts. I would buy a bunch of these. I mean, I, I'll wear the Fraggle Rock one, wear the Boy Meets World one, and the Not The Mama one. Not The Mama. I love that the Retro store also has a functioning Pac-Man machine where you play for a quarter. One fun thing about Broadway at the Beach, there's rides, like theme park style rides or carnival rides. And uh, they run on a ticket basis or a wristband basis, depending on how much you want to spend. Look at this slide. Then you got a big traditional style wave swinger as well. Check out a couple more rides they've got up here. 
They also got two sections of rides. This is the uh, the section that's more thrilling, more adult rides. They also have one for kids' rides. Definitely the scariest ride here at Broadway at the Beach is Speed XXL, this giant spinning arm ride. I I've been on it before, it is pretty terrifying. Nope, don't like it. Yeah, yeah, I made you do it last time we were here, and you were not a fan. Cool views though, but it's upside down, it's spinning, it's fast. I believe this ride's called the Mo Moonraker. And that's gotta be the most nauseating ride here yes. at Broadway at the Beach. Look at that. Oh my. Out of all the rides at the Broadway at the Beach, this one is my favorite. This is called The Beast. It is a giant swinging pendulum ride. And it, it's a big spinning pendulum ride. Also interesting, some of the seats face inward, some of the seats face outward. And you've got it, it looks like you definitely go about 100 feet in the air at least. Look at that. We're now in the other rides area, which is home to much more family friendly rides, like spinning balloons, the highlight being the big old Ferris wheel. There is also a roller coaster all the way in the back, a small kids spinning roller coaster, as well as a carousel, a family friendly drop tower, and a couple other things. Also gotta say, the Broadway at the Beach Ferris wheel has one of the best lighting packages I've ever seen on a Ferris wheel. That is mesmerizing. Now here is some pricing on those rides here at the Pavilion. Your all day wristband is gonna be about $38.50. You wanna go on the big Ferris wheel, $10.50. And then you can buy tickets. And the rides are all different costs of tickets. So like the big rides like Speed XL or the Beast, they're gonna cost you six or seven tickets. So that'll be around, you know, 10 to $13. Some of the more kid friendly rides, you know, they're gonna be three tickets. And right by the carnival rides, you've got, well, carnival food, like deep fried Oreo cookies or deep fried Twinkies. This attraction is Dino Park, which is an animatronic dinosaur exhibit and playground type thing, mostly designed for children. It costs $15 for adults to get in, $10 for kids to go in. And uh, you'll see that kind of thing. Dinosaurs. One of the marquee restaurants here is Paula Dean's Family Kitchen. As the jet boat goes by again. Now that's gonna be a family style restaurant where you get to pick out like, you know, a couple of main courses and a couple of sides for the table. And uh, the food's really good. Got some more interesting water activities you could do, including flopping around in a big inflatable cylinder. Also got this very interesting fountain pond statue. Broadway at the Beach is home to a Build-A-Bear workshop where kids can create their own stuffed animal. Like the Harry Potter one. Oh, look at that. And the Baby Yoda. And the Baby Yoda. But it's a fun experience for kids. In this big theater here is Le Grand Cirque, which is an acrobatic kind of special effects show. Um, tickets for this are about $45. Ooh, got one of these bungee jumping things for kids. You could rent a swan pedal boat or these leisure boats, which I believe is a powered boat. And there's also plenty of place here to feed the fish. Look at the fish. Now, if you are visiting during the peak tourist season, here at Broadway at the Beach, they do a free fireworks show every Tuesday night and every Friday night at 10 p.m. And I love fireworks, obviously. I, we're from Orlando, so we see plenty of fireworks, but there's gonna be a free fireworks show. Might as well come check it out. I'm a huge fan of decorating for the holidays and they have a Christmas at the beach store. And it had Santa wearing sunglasses. Cause he's at the beach. I, uh, I like this one. Santa is riding on a giant crab. Broadway at the Beach does have a winery, which you can do uh, apparently seven wine samples for $5. All local wine. So at the winery here, they do seven samples for $5. 
and it's uh, really interesting. They do uh, like higher proof stuff like shine wines that are almost the cores, and then dessert wines. They have a lot of fruity flavors. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend stopping. Pride Makers is a neat store where you can customize and build your own RC car. Something pretty new here at Broadway at the Beach is the Pro Football Hall of Fame has a, a sperm museum over here, the Gridiron Glory Exhibition with over 200 artifacts. A little inexpensive side, so I'm not going to go in. This does run $24. Now it's a nighttime destination. Broadway at the Beach has plenty of places for adults to enjoy some nightlife and the occasional adult beverage. I'm going to show up a couple of those now, including Fat Tuesdays, which is a frozen drink bar. You get some a plethora of very strong frozen drinks. The small, which is 16 ounces, like this one, will run you about eight bucks. They do have a good size Margaritaville here. That is a big one. So you can eat on the boat. Cool. This building here is the Wonders Theater, which runs different types of shows. You've got a comedy hypnosis hour. You've got a magic show. It looks like the magic show is at seven. Hypnosis is at nine. And a comedy variety show is at 4 p.m. Now, when I was looking earlier, I think a lot of these are on like Groupon, where you can get some, some good deals for them on there. And I think it was only about 20 bucks for some of the shows on Groupon. Dave & Buster's is here as well. Let's go take a peek inside. Now, peek inside Dave & Buster's, which is a bar, a restaurant. Uh, you can play billiards. You rent billiards for about somewhere between $8 and $14. And then, of course, there is the giant arcade that it is known for. Super duper modern games. If you've never been to a Dave Buster's, they always have like the latest and greatest games. I'm always a big fan of dueling piano bars, and they have one here at Broadway at the beach called Crocodile Rocks. I'm gonna have to run into the Hollywood Heroes and Villains store. This store is home to all sorts of uh, pop culture and comic book stuff from Funko Pops to t-shirts to board games. They got a um, mining for gold attraction, but the first time I've ever seen one of these, the water dies like a neon green. Broadway at the Beach is expanding quite a bit. They're just going to be building a Key West Village as well as the Hangout, which is a establishment in Gulf Shores, Alabama, like a big beach bar kind of place. And that's on its way here. You've got escape rooms here at Broadway at the beach, which are fun. Um, they do have a couple different escape room places in town. Also, that would not be good. Hyde does not like haunts at all. So the fact that they're haunting his house, that's not going to go well. Uh, right next to the escape rooms as well is a mirror maze. They have a distillery here where you can do some moonshine and vodka sampling. Now, if you want to do this, just keep in mind it does close at 7 p.m. due to some weird laws here in South Carolina. Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach is one of the main attractions, not only in Broadway at the beach, but in all of Myrtle Beach itself. It's a decent sized aquarium. Uh, to see the whole thing is probably about an hour and a half. They do have some really cool stuff in there though. They've got a really great shark exhibit called yes. the Dangerous Reef with this underwater tunnel and a moving walkway. And it, it's very big. It, it, it's a really, really impressive exhibit. My personal favorite part, the Penguin Playhouse. This is something that opened back in 2020. And I, I love penguins, they're my favorite animals and they do a good job with it. And not only do they have the Penguin Playhouse, a couple times a day they do a penguin parade. But the penguins waddle around. Yeah, they waddle around the lobby. There's some other really cool ex fish in there as well. They've got long-nosed batfish, which are really interesting. They've got a jellyfish exhibit, some wonderful coral reef stuff. And uh, I like the aquarium. In the middle of town on Ocean Boulevard, the Ripley's Company has four different attractions, the first of which being the moving theater. It's a motion simulator ride. You actually get to see two movies, one about a family of monsters, the other one about rats in a toy car race. And uh, I will tell you, I've been on a lot of motion simulator rides, probably hundreds of them. This one is very much an older technology, and it is violent. It might be the most violent simulator I've ever been on as far as the motion and getting repeatedly thrown to the right like 80 times. Wild ride. The next attraction by Ripley's is the Haunted Adventure. We just came out and it was it was not very good, guys, unfortunately. Um, it was very cheap. There was only like one actor in there. There was only like no effects. Yeah. It, it felt old, run down, and very budgety. So 
can't really recommend this one. There's a lot of other haunted houses in town. Do one of those. Right next to the Haunted Adventure, Ripley's does have a marvelous mirror maze. And the final Ripley's attraction here on this trip is, of course, the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. It's a collection of uh, weird stuff from all over the world. Um, whether that be like sculptures, like sculptures made out of like cigar ash or staples, uh, bubble gum, to like, there's actually a lot of movie props in this one, as well as, you know, weird people, taxidermy and animals, kind of a weird stuff. Mm -hmm. I would say it's my favorite out of the attractions, the Ripley's attractions on the boulevard, it's definitely my favorite. Pricing on the Ripley's stuff, if you are going to the aquarium, you can add on any of the boulevard attractions for $5. If you're not going to the aquarium, you can, uh, they, they, then it gets quite expensive. Like the Believe It or Not Museum is 25. The, the moving theater is 15. The haunted house is 15. And the mirror maze is 10. Um, and those all prices are a little bit on the high side. I would say if you're going to the aquarium and any of these interest you, and I'm on at five bucks, five bucks is not a ton of money. But uh, there we go, that's some of the Ripley stuff here on Ocean Boulevard. Over by Broadway at the beach is the Broadway Grand Prix, which is a collection of different go-kart tracks. There's also some other attractions in there, like there's kids rides and mini golf and arcade. Looks like they have a big sky coaster as well. Now these prices will all vary. You can do a wristband to do it all, and that's gonna run you around $40. Now if you wanna just go on like the go-karts, I think it's 10 or $12. A Myrtle Beach institution, and somewhere you have to visit, is the Gay Dolphin Gift Co. right here on Ocean Boulevard. So the Gay Dolphin is a must visit on uh, Gigantic Swords Advertise. They advertise themselves as like the biggest gift shop in America. I'm not sure if that's exactly correct, but it has been here since 1946. And they've got so much stuff from beach stuff to nautical stuff to just random stuff. Um, definitely a place you want to come and walk around. The Gay Dolphin does have this neat fountain and uh, fun stairs spiraling up to get you to all levels of this place. So there are in tons and tons of arcades here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, from where I'm standing right now, I could see three. But my favorite one in the entire town is the Fun Plaza right here on Ocean Boulevard. Now I love the Fun Plaza arcade. They got a lot of modern games, but they have so many of these old-timey baseball games. Ocean Boulevard for a new for 2021 attraction here and that's the Funplex a very small amusement park seven rides in this tiny little area and the highlight being the fun in the sun which is this crazy hamster wheel roller coaster by all the rides in the park are built by the SPF Visa company uh, the roller coaster is very interesting so you, you have your choice of whether you want to ride in a, uh, a spinning car where you rotate horizontally or the hamster wheel where you will flip end over end uh, Molly, I made you ride in the hamster wheel. Yep. And uh, what were your thoughts on this attraction? I don't like slow spinning rides, so not a fan. It was very uh, kind of rough too, you bet. Yeah. Side to side, my leg being the seats. It was very unique though. Yeah, I love that the uh, the watching your buddy aspect of it. Like I rode with you, and we got to watch each other as we flip upside down here on Ocean Boulevard. Now, yes. unfortunately, the rides in the Funplex is not very inexpensive. This uh, this hamster wheel coaster that Molly hated so much, that ran about $9 a person. And uh, that was quite a bit for that kind of uh, flippity dippity doo dah. Right on Ocean Boulevard is the Zombie Zone, which is a haunted house that's $11. Also, they got some escape room stuff in here. Hey, you. Something very different you could do here in Myrtle Beach, something I've never done before, is go on a helicopter ride. Uh, there's one over here by Broadway at the beach. You go on a helicopter ride for as low as $20. But that, the $20 one really just takes you up in the air and back down. Uh, the $40 one does take you over towards the beach. It was fun. Don't do the headsets. The headsets we did for $5, those were a complete ripoff and did not work. No. Uh, the tour was cool. I'm not sure I would do it again. I'm not sure if it's worth $40. It's pretty quick. But uh, I've never been on a helicopter. Now I can say I have. Very neat, unique. And it's, it was very smooth, too. Like, it's mm -hmm. a very, very smooth ride. A cool way to see the ocean as well. We're now coming at you from outside of Medieval Times and going to talk a little bit about the dinner shows here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, Medieval Times, a very popular chain. There's a whole bunch of these throughout the country. And that's your medieval jousting and kings and queens and tournaments and mm -hmm. 
horses and fighting, a lot of fun. This one ranges between $51 and $81. Uh, other popular ones in town are Pirate's Voyage, which is a really good show. It is a really good show. Really awesome stage, big giant lagoon. Uh, they have uh, some animals there too, giant animatronics. We've done that one before, that is a lot of fun. That one is $55. And $71. Yes, for your fancier seating. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, there is a Polynesian Luau. So if you want to feel like you're in Hawaii while you're here in Myrtle Beach and that's, you know, singing and fire dancing and stuff like that. And that one I believe is $60. $60. Or $70 for premium. So that is your dinner shows here in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach is famous for its golfing, so no surprise that they have a Top Golf here. If you're not familiar with Top Golf, it is a driving range, but it is gamified, so the balls are all smart, and they've got like tracking chips in them, and you can shoot them at targets, and it tells you how hard you hit it and how far you hit it. It's a really, really fun. I, I quite enjoy Top Golf. Of course, with Myrtle Beach being a beach town, water is very, very popular here, and you can rent boats or jet skis, pontoons, you can go fishing, uh, sightseeing, all that kind of stuff if you are into getting out on the water. One thing Myrtle Beach is very famous for is mini golf. Uh, one of the biggest destinations in the world for mini golf. This next segment, we're gonna show you some of the courses that can be found here, including this one, which is Molten Mountain, which is an indoor-outdoor mini golf, and the indoor parts are inside the volcano. Uh, this does cost you about $11 play around, and I love that the water is dyed red so that it looks like lava. Also, if it's raining and you wanna play mini golf, this one probably works, because a bunch of it is inside. Very good looking mini golf course here. This is Professor Hacker's Mayday Golf, complete with an airplane crashed into a mountain. You've got a helicopter over there. It's a very pretty looking mini golf course. You've also got a river over here with a giraffe drinking out of it. Another really fun mini golf. This is Professor Hacker's Dinosaur Adventure Golf. Definitely one of the more wild themes you'll get here. Look at that boat with the dinosaurs on it. Gonna play around a mini golf here. It's gonna run you about $12. But uh, that is, that's cool looking. This one is Jungle Lagoon Golf. Pretty impressive looking course. They've got two 18 hole courses. Uh, to play one, it's $9 for an all day pass. It is $12. Time for us to play a round of mini golf. We opted for Cancun Lagoon, an indoor outdoor mini golf course set in this Mayan temple. That was neat. So we're now inside, $11 to play some mini golf. Uh, one thing that's fun, they do sell beer. And the way this one works, there are 27 holes. And so essentially three nine hole courses, and you get to play two of them. Oh, look, there's Koi in the lake. So I like that the mini golf has this. They have like what they call these spinners. So you get to spin. And uh, Molly landed on runaway ball. After everyone is sticking their first shot, who would opponents fall anywhere on the hole? So now, uh, if you can see my ball was almost over there, Molly has picked up my ball. And yep, she's gonna place it over there. Look at the outside, it's an indoor outdoor mini golf course. This one's cool because the hole starts over here and then drops down a good 10 feet or so. And if I pan around, there is the, the big pyramid. This monster of a mini golf course is Mount Atlanticus Minotaur Golf. I love how you can go up in those little like perches. Right now, we're coming at you from Barefoot Landing which is a shopping, dining, entertainment district with all sorts of stuff here from shops to restaurants to attractions, wineries, distilleries, and more. Love the look of this. This is the Crooked Hammock Brewery, complete with hammocks, cornhole. Very neat. So the brewery's very nice. Um, they have six beers on draft. They all specialize in kind of like lighter, summer, easy drinking beers. Our favorites were definitely the two sours. You got three pretty fun stores in a row over here. It's Sugar, the big wild candy store, right next to the beef jerky store, and the fudgery. You got kids, they got an awesome playground here. Right on the water, you do have this adorable Tortuga Island Bar. It's like a tree in the middle. A tree in the middle, and then swings as bar stools. 
That is a very relaxing vacation stuff right there. There is a coastal wine boutique and tasting room in here. And uh, I do enjoy it. It's very pleasant. Like little villages separated by bridges and lakes. And look at uh, Krabby Jacks. Krabby Jacks has quite the logo. Yeah. That's adorable. Barefoot Landing also has a land shark bar and grill. Wonderful outdoor seating like over the water. And then look at this wonderful playground they have. That's really neat. In the Barefoot Landing area, it's home to the Alabama Theater, which produces one, the show, which is a big singing and dancing show, which runs nightly. Seems like we'll have to do more wine tasting while we're here at Barefoot Landing at the Carolina Vineyards Tasting Room, where wine goes in and fun comes out. Well, I'll never say no to a moonshine distillery. So we just did some moonshine sampling here. We sampled most of what they have. We got 12 samples for $10. And uh, by far our favorite was the caramel apple moonshine. They do have a couple of attractions for kids as well. There's a turbo bungee, a uh, trampoline attraction, and a pretty nice carousel for a outdoor mall type area. Cool thing about Barefoot Landing, you know, we are in the, the swamp lands. And you get some native wildlife that I'm guessing people are probably feeding. Yeah, don't do that, guys. No. The next attraction we're going to talk about is Alligator Adventure, which is a reptile zoo right near Barefoot Landing in North Myrtle Beach. And it's pretty solid. It's about $30 for adults to get in, $20 for kids to get in. But they have an incredible selection of animals. Uh, tons and tons of species of alligators and crocodiles, including some very, very special ones. They have an albino alligator. They've got Utan, the king of crocs, which is the biggest crocodile ever on display in North America. They've got Bob who is a tailless alligator. Never seen that before. No, so they have a lot of great animals. They do have some other types of animals as well. Things like ostriches, lemurs, mountain lions, hyenas. And it's a neat place. You know, for $30, I think it's a little on the pricey side, but we were there for about an hour. So that's, that's about how long it took us to see all of Alligator Adventure. But what they do have is pretty nice. Lunchtime here in Myrtle Beach, we're gonna go to Hamburger Joe's. So hamburger Joe's pretty cheap. Uh, we're drinking two dollar Bud Light drafts. The cheeseburger was like four dollars and change. The side of fries was like three bucks. Pretty good place if you're looking for value. And while it is a hamburger joint, the cheeseburger really, really tasty. We did hear the wings were really good, so we went to get we got this big plate of wings. Not as cheap on the wings. The wings are thirteen dollars, but they smell really, really good. All right, it's breakfast time, and we're going to eat at Johnny D's Waffles and Benedict's. It's a restaurant that came recommended to us by a bunch of different people. So as we're waiting for our table, this menu is gigantic. Like, they have every breakfast option you can imagine, and each one, like, just tons and tons of stuff. Like, ten different waffles, ten different omelets, like, ten different Benedict's, pancake stacks, breakfast cocktails, just all sorts of stuff. This is... Look at that. I didn't even see. I didn't even see the skillets when I looked at the mm -hmm. menu the first time. Yeah, this looks like quite the place. So after studying that textbook of a menu, I went with the pork belly Benedict, and Molly got the twisted chicken and waffle, which is a bacon waffle with chicken on top. You guys all right? I am quite the sucker for a themed dining experience. So when I was told there was a dinosaur restaurant here in Myrtle Beach, I had to give it a whirl. I mean, it's got dragons and woolly mammoths on the sign. Molly, how could we not eat here? I don't know. So uh, we didn't have reservations, and apparently they're booked up here at the Dino Line Cafe. But it is, uh, it's actually it's kind of neat, but I'm kind of bummed. Like, they're supposed to be animatronics, but none of them seem to be moot. Um, definitely if you're looking for somebody to eat with kids, this is probably a solid option. Look at the dragon and the volcano. Oh, that caveman is kind of terrifying. Interesting. Oh, and then it's Ice Age in this corner. Interesting, interesting place. Time to grab some lunch just a couple blocks off the beach by the Ferris wheel. This is Dagwood's Deli. The food here looks pretty good. I got the Lynn Swan Dipper, which is 
a turkey roast beef cheese and bacon bits. Serve with some dill mayo on the side. Molly, that looks really good. Look at that meatball sub. Yeah, it looks delicious. Now, it these, smells good. Yeah, for these two sandwiches and my fountain soda, it's about $24. I'm gonna grab some food here at the River City Cafe. Molly, out of everywhere we had our hit list here in Myrtle Beach, this one was the one you were most excited about. Yes, yes, and it was also uh, recommended by a listener. Stefan from his favorite Swiss burgers, and uh, wow, they have a lot. And then they have like ridiculous like comedy burgers, meatloaf burgers, wow. Now making decisions was not easy with that menu. Molly went with the California pizza burger, which has cheese curds, pepperoni, and sauce on it. You get a free salted peanuts on the table. Then went with Philly cheesesteak. So fried onions, spicy chipotle mayo, Philly beef, and a burger. Our next stop is the Dumplin' Winery, which is a beautiful looking building. And we take a big cooler, fill it with ice. The Dublin winery experience is really, really nice. Um, to do the sampling, it's $12. You get to sample 10 different wines. You get this delicious crackers and cheese dip that was fantastic. Then you get a souvenir glass to take home, as well as a full glass of wine, whichever one out of the 10 you like the best. So a uh, pretty good deal. Uh, the facility is beautiful. They have an outdoor bar as well. You get a glass of wine for like four or five bucks, and they've got entertainment out here. I uh, really recommend the stop. And the wine is not expensive. Like uh, the bottles of wine go, like they start as low as like eight bucks. They do go up, like some of them are like 40 or $50. But uh, most of them are not bad. Gonna pop into the Grumpy Monk for uh, some beer and happy hour snacks. I absolutely adore the fountain they have here in which uh, beer taps make kind of a waterfall. It's wonderful. This looks pretty nice. This is Riptide, it's right on the beach. There's a rooftop bar and then a sand patio here where you can play cornhole and stuff like that. Looks like they have entertainment in the evenings as well. So Molly and I are huge fans of craft beer, and we were told if you love craft beer in Myrtle Beach, you've got to go to the Atlas Tap House, which is just a couple blocks off of Ocean Boulevard. Absolutely love the Atlas Tap House. Uh, very much feels like a, a neighborhood dive bar with really good beer, and uh, their prices are really nice too. Like we had uh, two full pours of beers, and then we had like 11 half pours of all really nice craft beer and the tab came to uh before tip was like 46 bucks which is not bad especially when you're in you know earshot of the the mega tourism attractions to go to a, a what felt like a, a neighborhood craft beer bar was wonderful can't recommend this place enough feels like a beer probably the most famous bar in all of myrtle beach is right here on ocean boulevard and that is the bowery as it was the original home a musical group Alabama from 73 to 1980. Now it runs live music uh, every single night at 8.30. Right on the boardwalk on Ocean Boulevard is Hurricane's Daiquiri Bar, serving up some Fat Tuesday frozen daiquiris. It is air conditioned inside. They also have seating outside as well. Uh, we, we opted for the air conditioning, but it's cool. You can sit here, watch the water, people watch, and enjoy a big old frozen daiquiri. We got the large, it's gonna run you about nine bucks. One cool thing about hurricanes as well, the kids' meals are served on frisbees. So if you if you have kids with you, they can get their meal, and then go play with their frisbee on the beach. So one thing you could do here is go on a casino cruise. If you're a big gambler, I am not a big gambler, but uh, you go out on the boat. They take you in international waters, and then you can gamble. Right in the center of town by Ripley's Believe It or Not and the Bowery right next to the beach is a number of beach volleyball courts. So if you and your buddies want to play, there are about 10 courts over here to play on. So one thing we do recommend is they have a lot of these coupon books around town. Definitely thumb through them. You can save a lot of money. I mean, we probably saved 30 or 40 bucks from some of the coupons we used between the two of us. So definitely check out the Monster Book and any other guidebooks that have coupons in them. One thing you can't do in Myrtle Beach, Hard Rock Park. Been closed for about 10 years and uh, all the rides have been removed. Shockingly, you could still like walk up to it if you wanted to. Looks like the Freestyle Music Park logo is still kind of on the, the gate. 
definitely giving me uh, some Scooby-Doo vibes over here. And that'll do it for our time in Myrtle Beach. Um, it is a town with a lot of stuff to do. A whole bunch. Yes, and it, it makes it for a really great vacation too. And something that's very repeatable, like we went three or four years ago, and there were so many new things to do just mm -hmm. in those couple of years. Now, Molly, we did a lot of stuff. What were some of your favorite things that we did? Oh, I love the aquarium, like the penguins. Penguin parade. Penguin parade, who doesn't love that? <laughs> yeah, I, I I like going to see the minor league baseball game. I hadn't done that in a very long time. I also really enjoyed that wax museum complex. That was a very high quality attraction. And I think they're two like shopping, dining, entertainment areas with Barefoot Landing and Broadway at the Beach. Those are both a really, really nice place to spend an evening. Yes, and uh, both of them kind of different. Some of the same shops, but uh, different things to do. Yeah, different vibe. Mm -hmm. Now we uh, we. Did a lot, we ate some pretty good food. What was your favorite thing we ate while in Myrtle Beach? Oh, that's really, really hard for me. Uh, uh, it, River City, that burger was really good. I think for me, it's probably that sandwich we had at Dagwoods. Dagwoods was really good. That bread, oh, delicious. Yeah. All right, we did a, a, our fair share of uh, the adult beverage consuming and uh, drank in a lot of fun places. What was your favorite place where we uh, we had a few beers? I really actually enjoyed the winery because it was a very different feel for us. Uh, the music, the atmosphere, really good wines, especially if you like sweet wines. Yeah, that was a really, really cool experience going to that winery. For me, I love that Atlas Tap House. Yes, they lots were, of craft beers. Lots of craft beers, very welcoming, fun bartenders. Uh, didn't feel touristy at all. This felt like your your neighborhood hole in the wall bar with an insanely good craft beer lineup. Also, the piano bar was a blast over at Broadway at the Beach. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that'll do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are planning a trip to Myrtle Beach, I do hope this video helped you plan, gave you some ideas while you're over there. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And thank you very much for watching. Also, be sure to follow us on social media because that is, before we go to any city like this, we always ask for suggestions on things to do and places to eat. And that's, that's how we find a whole bunch of this stuff. So be sure to follow us over there and thank you for watching.